Now a lot of stuff is coming out about Project House 2 and I wanted to make a video on it a while ago but I thought you know what I need to sit down and properly organize this video because I'm gonna rip Ian Bell a new one. I wanted to wait and structure basically everything that I had all the information I needed to kind of put across the point that I really want to make with this game. Project House 1, my video on Project House 1 did really really well for bad reasons a lot of people hated it but I thought it was still brilliant nonetheless, the outcome was awesome. But I'm going to structure this video like those commentary channels do, just for the reason that I want to get my point across as clearly as possible. And I apologise if the lighting is weird, I'm just trying to set up, I'm in Meadow's room. But, yeah, anyway. Actual new features. Now there's not a whole lot of actual new features in this game, it's very vague on what they're actually adding to the game. A lot of stuff has been thrown into marketing terms just to kind of make you go, oh that's a cool feature coming to the game that's probably already in the last one but I don't know that because marketing. Live track. Now this one actually sounds pretty cool. Live track basically is the whole idea of having all elements all together at the same time. So weather will affect the track obviously like normal stuff. Weather uh, in the daytime for example it'll be hotter. In the nighttime it'll be cooler. The road will have less grip. That sort of thing. But then you also get something which is even more awesome. So if you go off the track and back on the track you bring the dirt on the track with you and that will basically degrade your tyres, make the car handle differently on that section. Now, will this actually matter in the whole scheme of things overall? Like, normally games say they're going to do that, like puddles and all this kind of bollocks that they add. But generally, nothing really happens. It's just like a slight effect that you're like, oh, well that was the difference. Sometimes you don't even notice it at all. I'm hoping I do. Uh, another thing is actually you can change it to snow. Snowing in racing games, I don't think there's normally ever really been that snow option. Snow option that's cool. Oh, and also there's actually going to be effect by wind, so wind on light cars will mess around with you a little bit more, which sounds quite interesting. Again, all of this is just in the fact that if the handling model is poo in the game again, none of this will matter. Rally courses are new. Rally courses I'm actually excited about because I like rally. And then again, we've got dirt rally coming out, which will probably do it better. But hey, having a game that has more features Cool. Gran Turismo does rally really well. Rally stages will be on dirt and snow as far as we know so far. Now we do know there's 170 cars coming out at launch apparently uh, and there's also going to be more over time with DLC to break into the 200s. Now that's a heck of a lot of cars. I had no issues with the amount of cars in Project Cars. The issue I had with Project Cars is cars <laughs> is there weren't that many. There were seeming to be more tracks than cars that I actually wanted to drive. Giving me, you can give me a million cars but I could honestly care less about any of them. Just give me cars I actually want to drive. There was like five or six cars I actually wanted to drive in Project Cars, which meant I actually made about five or six videos on Project Cars. I think I was actually less than that, but you get the idea. Give us more cars that people are interested in. But it does seem like they're doing that because they're adding the, they've got the Ferrari and Porsche licenses. I said Porsche for the first time ever. Ferrari and Porsche licenses, those are definitely gonna add some awesome cars. In the last game, they said they're locations rather than tracks, which means they're like, Lots of different variations of this track, which means, oh, they're technically like a million tracks. It's it's not true. There's basically like one version of each track you'll actually try. So what they do is call them locations, just to make it sound more fancy. Variations of tracks. Forza says it has like 10 tracks, but it actually has about 20 if you count them properly. But, well, it's probably more than that. Probably like 50. But they don't do that because they're not stupid. And they're not trying to lie to consumers. Anyway, Project Cars 2. 50 locations, which is actually quite a lot. To be fair, Project Cars 2 had awesome locations, awesome tracks. It's just a damn shame that the cars and the physics didn't kind of meet that standard. Now for the question that's been on my mind and everybody's mind since it got announced. And just so you know, it didn't get announced recently. It got announced two months after the first game came out. Talk about my, talk about that a little bit more later. Will it work with a controller? I'm hoping so. They say there's a new handling model, there's a new change in the handling model, but they only seem to specify that they've changed the tyre model, which is going to affect the cars. They haven't necessarily said they've actually changed the handling other than the tyre model, and the normal handling model just did not work on a controller. The, the point of the fact is, you can complain all you like that the game is meant for wheels, whatever. It's on consoles. If it's on consoles, it should work on controllers. That's just how it is. 99% of people that will play this game will use a controller. The, the rest percentage will use a wheel. Let's be fair, there's also going to be some that use a keyboard as well. But let's, if you're using a keyboard, that's a bit silly. But a lot of people don't have 500 pounds to splash on a wheel setup and everything. Now, it's, it's, okay, you can get a cheaper one than that, but having a cheap wheel without force feedback is literally like using a controller anyway. So you, they need to make controllers work. If they don't, that's going to ruin the game. Like the last one. One huge issue I had with the handling model in the first game, which is still apparent in the second game, 
is the aftershock thing that I feel when I'm driving cars. So when you're driving cars and you turn a corner, you turn slightly, the car wobbles. Now that's what happens in real life, but the amount that it does in this game makes you go, okay, now that's just a bit silly, and it really puts you off actual driving. This wobble thing was a thing in Shift, Shift 2, Project Cars, and now Project Cars 2. So it looks like it's staying forever, unfortunately, because it's bloody annoying. Stop it. But yeah, according to the fanboys, probably time to spend 500 pounds on a wheel setup, lads. Go on, go out there and spend all those 500 pounds that cost more than your PS4 Pros and your TVs, probably. Features that are still missing. Now, this is gonna be an interesting one, because there's gonna be a lot of people that say, oh no, that wasn't, that wasn't said, or that, th there's gonna be lots of excuses in the comments about this one, and I cannot wait. I have proof that these features were announced, because I, do, I dug up the pages, and there's actually a few other features that I'm missing out from this list, because a lot of the pages just gone, and I did make a list when they got announced or whatever. But these are the main reasons I hated Project Cars. The handling model, like, I could have... And I'm okay with ha bad handling models as long as it was fixable, which it kind of was, but still felt a little bit dodgy in some areas. But anyway, they didn't try and improve it. Co-driving multiplayer. Now, this was supposed to be a feature where multiplayer, like, you and your friend could play together and your friend would be a co-driver and talk to you and that kind of thing. The whole campaign was set up, supposed to be set up so you can actually do that through the whole campaign or a whole separate campaign. They scrapped it and they didn't tell anyone and they released the game. And I expected to see this. Where is it? Not an update, not even in the second game. So I'm a little bit disappointed by that because it sounds like an awesome feature. But I mean, I guess it's still possible if you just share play. But still, it's it's... It's stupid. I want to be able to do that. Team management. You're supposed to be able to manage a full team of your friends and AI and do proper full-on races, commanding everyone, telling what everyone wants to do, where the positions are, everything like that. Not possible. User-generated content. Now, you can make liveries on the PC, but it was actually really weird yet. Yeah, I thought there was supposed to be a livery editor. I think you actually have to do it on Photoshop and upload it into the game's files, which is a bit dodgy. But anyway, there's supposed to be user-generated content on all platforms, and you're supposed to be able to share that user-generated content. Can you do any of that? No. Can you still do any of those features? No. That's really annoying. And now it's time for one of my favorite sections. Ian Bell is a knob. Now this man, this man is an interesting man. He, if you didn't know, is basically the lead of Slightly Mad Studios. He has recently gone on holiday while they're developing the game. Uh, I say he's gone on holiday. He's pretty much moved somewhere in Europe. I don't know. It's really confusing, but the point is, the man is a knob. Even ignoring the fact that this guy attacked people that funded and bought his game on the forums, even ignoring the fact that he insulted Wii U owners waiting for their release of the game, and was quoted for saying, we really dislike Nintendo users on his own forum for the game. Ian Bell is probably one of the main reasons I dislike so strongly Project Cars. Obviously he makes a lot of the decisions, obviously not all the decisions are his own, decisions, it's been helped by someone else or whatever, but he gets the final call. Now the first game was community funded, which is awesome, planned all these amazing features. It, it, it looked incredible, honestly, let's be honest, it looked incredible. They reached the funding goal pretty early on, a massive funding goal they received, which is so awesome. To support racing games like that, incredible. Thank you everyone out there that actually supported the first, I and mean, even the second game. I'll get into that in a second. But the game got funded, all the money they needed, they got, and then they signed with the publisher anyway. I'm like, okay, whatever, I'll let it fly because maybe they just needed a little bit more, more money than they predicted. The game released, it was unplayable for pretty much everyone unless you had a stupid wheel set up. Even if you had a stupid wheel set up, the game just handled like shit. It was, it was buggy and bollocks and shit. Now it did improve over time, but it's still shit to this day, so. Even people have been telling me that the free version they got on Xbox is still buggy and shit and it runs at 15 FPS while you're still installing the game, which is why would you even let people play it at that point? And I think after that, it's still like 20 something FPS. It's, it's a mess. I don't care about frame rate normally, but when it comes to a simulator, pretty damn sure that you should at least run at a stable 30, the minimal. Anyway, so the game was buggy and crap, and then they announced the new game two months after the release, with still no free DLC promised release but due to the game being bad and buggy and delayed, I think it was the reason. After the second game got announced, they announced fan funding for the second game. What? Oh yeah, the game sold millions. Well done, thank you very much for helping us sell this game. Millions and makers, millions and millions of pounds. But we need more money to make this next game, so please, please give us more money, even though we haven't fixed the first game added the features we promised, etc, etc. Though the fan funding did eventually get cancelled, they made 200,000 around there, and the reason they said they stopped is because we did we, we got as much as we need. 
But let's be honest, it's because of the feedback and they said, like, come on, seriously, you got all that money from releasing the first game. Why not use the money like a normal developer and make the next game? It's kind of how it works, Project Cars. But yeah, they cancelled it and now the game is somehow funded perfectly fine. No idea. This is ignoring the fact that some of the rewards were downright stupid. £5,000 would get you dinner with the development team, which sounds like a pretty cool thing. I mean, if I was going to help fund a game, I'd, I'd like to meet the team. If you donate £10,000, then you get to have and pay for your own dinner with Ian Bell. <laughs> I think I'd rather have it with the whole team, Mr. Ian Bell. Pay more and you actually got a drive in Ian Bell's personal Ferrari. You didn't actually get to drive it, he drove you around in it. Thanks, Ian Bell. And this leads us on to the conclusion, should I buy the game? Day one? No, I wouldn't buy Project Cars 2 day one. To be honest, I wouldn't buy it day two, day three, day four. You get the idea. I wouldn't buy the game until you see the reviews and stuff come out. Now, I say wait for the reviews, but be careful who you watch. If you watch IGN, if you watch the big ones, usually they've been spoon-fed. Oh, yeah, these are all the features, and they, 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 they never really put a racing guy in these games. They tend to not be very good at racing games, and they're not good at racing games in general. So when the physics are bad, they can't even tell, and they just be like, yeah, it's, it's all right, it's all right. Just for the reason that there's such a solid fan base around, like, simulator games and such. If they say anything wrong about a simulator game, Oh, your site, your site's awful. Again, simulator used lightly. If you do want to buy the game and it does excite you, because some of the features actually sound pretty cool, like the rally, for example, and the dynamic, weathery, tarmac y stuff, sounds pretty cool. If you want to buy it day one, buy it on Steam so you can refund it when you find out the game is probably shy. If you're on consoles, again, you can wait. You'll, before the game comes out, you'll have Forza Motorsport 7, which isn't, I mean, not the most exciting game in the world, but I mean, it's going to work with the controller, and on the PlayStation you have Gran Turismo Sport, which again has... Though both those games, I would say, have features that I would really want, and that Project Cars has, and whatever. But if the game is actually playable compared to Project Cars, I mean, you should probably get those. Though Gran Turismo Sport is looking cool, and Forza Motorsport 7 we don't know anything about, but I know for a fact it's not going to have a hell of a lot of new features. Probably like a Scorpio push or something. I think the general idea here is that uh, if the game is playable good if the game actually works with a controller which is what 99 percent of the people on consoles use mr ian bell and even on pc most people use a controller then i think you should get it but until we know that for sure don't but we've got a long while until project cars 2 i don't know why the information's coming out now probably actually makes sense because it's just before e3 to be fair the announcement was actually two months after the first game but anyway rounding up here Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on Project Cars 2 down below. Let me know down in the comments what you think of it. Are you getting it? All that kind of stuff. But yeah, let me know if you want to see more gaming videos like this and um, this kind of gaming it's talking about. I've wanted to make a video on this for a while. And also it ties in with the secret project I've been working on, which you'll find out about soon. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.